had I known DVD Freak, I would have fucking tagged you on the Twitter thing. Oh, it's cool. All right, everybody. This is the Pro Zone this week. This is the Professor Rick Del Santo, and joining us is Dan and JJ. And returning this week is the DVD Freak. Gentlemen, how the fuck are you? <laughs> Does this Great. answer yeah, your question? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Did we expect any less from a WWE pay-per-view as we are um, talking the horror show, Extreme Rules. And uh, it's kind of funny that, you know, somebody said that it really wasn't that bad on Twitter. And I was like, this is, it's it's um, titled appropriately. It was pretty fucking horrific to watch. Um, yeah, but, you know, actually, the horror show, you know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, I, uh, I mean. You know me. I try to like everything. Uh, yeah, I try to remain positive and try to like in everything, but it's very um, pretty impossible when the New Day are opening up the show. So it was hard. Um, yes, hard. But I did yes. like the finish. Uh, the finish was good. That was a rowdy finish. <laughs> I'm just saying, like you know, not saying because the match ended. That finish, right. you know, the double tables. I I was like, oh, oh, you know. Um. If I wasn't, before we get into the rest of the show, if I was not looking to watch a wrestling show, I'd probably enjoy these cinematic matches, but uh, I'm trying to watch a wrestling show, and then, uh, but uh, some people seem to be into them, I'm particularly not, and, but this one was actually kind of entertaining, it just, like I said, it reminded me of a horror show, it was pretty interesting, the, uh, I like the ending part, where they kept coming out of the water, and then, you know, after that, it was just kind of whatever, so... Uh, it was, uh, those, was that? I said, yeah, it got a little great. Uh, so did any of you guys watch the pre-show? I was not available to watch the pre-show. I tuned in just as it was starting, so. I, I did not watch the pre-show. All I know is there was Kevin Owens versus Buddy Murphy. and well, Which was, was probably Owens. an awesome match. It, it seemed like it was I didn't that. that would be a good match. But I haven't I watched, I haven't watched the pre-show in years. Yeah, it's, I yeah. didn't know, I wasn't aware of a pre show. I honestly yeah. wasn't. So uh yeah. But that oh, does that like sounds... like you said, Rick, that sounds like a really good match. Yeah, I mean those two guys are probably some of their best workers that they have today, like on a you know, regular basis. And you know, it's a lot of times my favorite one of my favorite guys was not on the pre show for once this time, Cesaro. Um you know, he always tends to get on the pre-show for some reason, but not this week. Uh, it started off, I don't really know the stipulation. Um, I had company dinner guests, and I was trying to pay attention to that and pay attention to my guests. Uh, so this is a tables match, I'm assuming, but judging by the end of it. Okay, yeah. so uh, Nakamura and Cesaro won the, the tag titles over the New Day. In the. I was happy about that. I am extremely happy uh, because I'm a huge Cesaro fan. So I think we um, have to. I think we have. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say. <laughs> and I'm go ahead, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was going to say Cesaro really needs to break out of the whole fucking tag team scene. Every time I see Cesaro, it's like let's pair him up with something, somebody different. You know, whether it's Tyson Kidd, whether it's Sheamus, whether it's fucking Nakamura, and I know he was a tag team specialist back, you know, in his ROH days with, you know, right. Chris Hero, but God forbid, the guy's already been in the business for almost, I want to say maybe like 10 years now, maybe going no, on 10 it's definitely, years? definitely longer than that, because he's, he, I think he's been in WWE close to that, at least, so, yeah. so, so it's I mean, like, he spent a number of years on the indie circuit before yeah. that. He's a, he's a good hand. He's proving to be a good hand. He basically does whatever the hell uh, Vince asked him to. Um, I want him to go and capture that big uh, singles title. Though. That's something I've been trying to, you know, I mean, I wanted to see for a very long time. And he's always stuck in tag teams, it seems, and that's where he gets all the, his gold in WWE. Uh, yeah, I don't and, understand that. Because what, he was over like Rover. When, I remember he was doing that big swing. <laughs> Right. Remember yeah. that that big swing and that like I mean I was always I knew like I don't want to sound like a I know I'm gonna sound like a smart smart but when he I knew him as Claudio 
as Senior. you know, in Ring Senior. of Honor, and you know, he was when he made it to WWE and happy, and he was over, you know, with that swing, and then they made him stop it. Remember, there was a sorrow section, wasn't that a yeah. thing? The sorrow section, yeah, and yeah. then they just booking. It's just booking. I don't know what it is. It's a damn shame. Yeah, he a lot of people say it's so much. More. A lot of people say it's because he can't talk. You know, and that he just needs a mouthpiece, and that's the only reason. Give him a manager. Yeah, exactly. Give him a manager. That's, that's how he'll uh, get the title. So, what do you guys think of this one overall? I, you know, uh, I, I actually like. The, I didn't hate this match. Mm-hmm. I liked it, but again, I'm I, I'm a mark for Nakamura and Cesaro, so yep. that's probably why. I, I think it was. I think it was disappointing that it wasn't elimination tables match. Okay. Because um, then, obviously, you get you get more table action. You can, you know, go through two or three tables. I never like just the one table and you're and you're done. I always like the elimination yeah. aspect. But I thought the finish was cool. Other than that, it was kind of just your generic WWE yeah. tables match. Yeah. yeah. Danny. Uh, um, you know, like DVD Freak said, you know, just a basic generic tables match but you know something that wwe is notorious for or any like wrestling is just putting two wrestlers you know together you know odd pairings i guess you would say but um you know yeah Hmm? vince mcmahon hates tag team wrestling uh you know for like the last 30 years he hasn't really yeah since like the 1980s it seems or even 90s i'd probably say that's a shame, but at least yeah. I mean, at least we had the we had a good, you know, you had a good uh, tag team division in Ring of Honor. You had a yeah. good tag team division in Impact. You know, over the years we've had at least we've had alternatives, and even NXT. NXT yep. had a re- and still does. And yep. even I, I don't remember when it was the hottest. Uh, maybe for me when uh, the revival was in NXT. I think that was when that was when right. NXT. Like the hottest tag, it was great, and then you obviously you know other companies, but yeah, yeah, you're. It seems I read that that I read that McMahon, Benny Mac hates uh, tag team wrestling. Yeah, he's just not a fan of it. He doesn't push it like he used to back in the day, and it's just it's kind of disappointing. Tag team wrestling is fun. I think it's like a it's kind of like the the art of tag team wrestling has been pushed to the side. Every you know, and but in WWE, everybody's gonna have a gimmick and get over like. uh, you know, some outlandish gimmick. So, you don't have that, then what good are you in uh, WWE land? One of my favorite rivalries ever was the triangle with uh, the Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys. Oh, yeah. That was some great <laughs> stuff. That was that, some good stuff. That spanned for multiple years. They had great mm-hmm. matches over and over on pay-per-view and on TV. Yeah. You know, I, I just love that aspect of tag team wrestling. And it's just that that magic is gone. Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame that uh, stuff like that is no, I wouldn't say it's no longer in existence. It's just not as prevalent today as uh, it once was. And again, so, how can you top I think that has a lot to do with it, JJ. You're kind of right on that. It's like sometimes like we've uh, lived through some really great things that it's impossible to get something to that level again. Uh, I mean, it does. Not to say that it doesn't happen because it does. It's just it's. It takes a while to get there, you know. They, they made it very hard to pop what they did. I think. Yep, those guys yeah. made yeah, it made it very difficult. And then, and then if you ask guys like Bully Ray, they'll he'll say those two tag teams are some of the, the best opponents he's ever had in the ring. Really? I, well, and, I never heard him say that. But that's pretty cool. That's he always awesome. talks about his career, you know, on Busted Open all the time. So he, he loves saying that stuff. He loves to talk about himself. I've been, I've been meaning <laughs> to listen to that Busted Open. I have. I have been meaning. I have episodes downloaded onto yep. my phone. Yep. I haven't gotten to it, but I will. No, I li- I'm a loyal listener every day. I'm a huge Dave LaGreca fan. He's hilarious. And uh, so the SmackDown Women's title, I was kind of disappointed in this match. I actually thought they were going to eventually, you know, put Nikki Cross over. But Bailey yeah. continues her reign of terror. 
What did uh, I? I don't know. I thought this wasn't that bad of a match to begin with. Like in actuality, considering that I'm not a Bailey fan, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, I'm I do like Nikki Cross a lot though. Maybe that's why I was kind of trying to pull for her. Would you? So, what did you, uh, gentlemen, think of this one? You know, uh, it, it, ha- it happened. <laughs> Maybe we're not drunk. Maybe we're not drunk enough today. <laughs> I'm getting there. Hold on. All right. All right. I'm really Does anybody else want to take the lead? I, What's I am fucking high right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm stoned. Really, really stoned. Uh, I watched it. Yeah. I, like you said, I, Nick Cross. I love Nick Cross. It's not mm-hmm. love, but it, I, again, I haven't watched. WWE in a long time. No, like, and um, this pay per view is definitely a reminder as to why I don't watch WWE on a regular basis. <laughs> so I haven't, only, I haven't but, watched anything since WrestleMania. Yeah, this was the first oh. thing I've watched since then. Uh, the only thing that I've actually bought, like watched was uh, pay per views by WWE. You know, I've uh, in, I do watch NXT. Yeah, you know, I usually watch it Thursday mornings because I'm watching AEW. So, it's, I don't know, they're trying different stuff to try to attract people. And well, this, this I, definitely shows that, and it just doesn't work. Well, but, I mean, I like, well, am, am I right? The ending did end by uh, Bailey che- cheating. Am I correct? She used yeah. Sasha, Sasha Banks' uh, rings, the boss rings, and, and knocked uh, Nikki Cross okay. in the stomach. So, well, okay, it's... Didn't make Nikki Cross look that bad. You know, you can't no, be like, oh, she cheated. Yeah. Because she cheated. Yeah. She cheated. So I'm uh, watching it. I mean, it's just like, well, I mean, I was, again, I'm trying to enjoy it, trying to get. I haven't watched WWE in a long time. I don't even know who is the champion. I was confused. I felt bad. I'm like, ugh. But anyway. That's. That's not I, uh, surprising, though, going into a WWE pay-per-view, or going into watching a WWE event. Most of the time, it's like I watch, and I, there's sometimes I don't know who certain guys in the roster are anymore, you know? Yeah. But at least they told, they told a story. They told yeah. a story. Uh, yeah. And Nikki Cross isn't buried. There's there's room for another match. Yeah. I yeah. look at it like, eh, I mean, maybe Nikki Cross will get another title match. Maybe she will win. Because this right. may, I mean, if, if you're a fan of Nick Cross, if you're a fan and you're really into WWE, you're going to, you know, you're going to get that right. other, the other match. You're going to be excited. So, yeah. It could happen I Friday, wasn't. for all we know. There could be like a rematch on Friday. That, you know, they've been known to do that. Something won't happen on a pay per view, but then they'll drag you in on, uh, you know, Monday or Friday, and then that's when they'll decide to move it. And do a title. What did you think, Dan? You're awfully quiet over there. What did you think? Yeah, why are you quiet, bro? Uh, just, uh, I, I'm still trying to process this show, honestly. Um, <laughs> um, honestly, I'm not surprised that Bailey retained. Obviously, they want to see Sasha as a double champion as well. You know, try and have both women from separate rosters as, you know, dual champions, whether, you know, holding all the women's gold, uh, right. pretty much. But, I mean, sooner or later, I mean, Nikki Cross is going to have her shine. I mean, obviously, it wasn't today, but right. I, I think they're saving it for maybe SummerSlam. Uh, it's a very big it? possibility. Ooh. Very big. Yep. I didn't think about that. So, anyways, it wasn't really terrible. This next part, part, part excuse me, really kind of irritated me that uh, MVP took the title by forfeit. So I have not seen anything like this happen in probably two decades or maybe a decade. It's just uh, it's pretty old school, but it's uh, and, and honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. This was probably like the one match I was actually looking forward to because it was actually gonna be a normal fucking match. I think you're <laughs> probably right about that. Here's the pro. Here's the problem, though. Would they have actually gave them time to have a good fucking match? Ooh, that is a no. Point. Yes, I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm surprised, though, that they would do something like this with, like, MVP coming back and, I wouldn't say he won it, you know, be handed a title. But, you know, guys like that, he's there to help out younger talent. They don't necessarily win the title. I don't know. Either way. Um, he I was, sure seems to be helping himself. Yes. Yeah. I love What's watching Apollo Crews. Like, I yeah. didn't know. I think he's a really good wrestler. And then he finally yeah. is getting somewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, Dan's cracking another one. What are you drinking, Dan? Bud Light. Yingling. Oh, Link. all right. Or there you go. I'm already, on, I'm already on drink number four. Um, I will be starting number four shortly. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I feel horrible. I'm not. I haven't had a drink. Oh, man, this sucks. I can't drink. Nah. Anymore. Nah, I told you after last week, I, uh, uh, I'm i calm this week. I have not touched the whiskey once I, uh, yeah, I'm going to save that for a special. Because maybe I'll save that for another WBE pay-per-view. I think that's when I should be doing <laughs> the <this> shit. So. <laughs> so. I think I might need a tequila, wine, party favors. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, a little, yeah. No, I would So... All right, gentlemen. The uh, next one, obviously, eye for an eye. What, uh, oh, oh, God. Well, first, uh, oh, first is, uh, kudos, kudos for fucking WWE taking a fucking concept out of fucking AEW book. You know, well fucking played. Well fucking oh, played. You know. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Oh. One of the things that I just, the ending was possibly the worst fucking ending, in my personal opinion. Um, first you off, know what? You, know, I, you know what? I'm gonna rant. I'm gonna fucking rant. You want to hear okay, me fucking rant? rant? I'm after you. Okay. <laughs> Listen, this whole fucking match revolved around a fucking toolbox. A toolbox? Seriously? You pull out the fucking table. I'm like, yes, you're using the table. A fucking toolbox. Like, well, literally. My thing and is then like, they have they twine. Were... What are you going to use for twine? Where are we going with this? But that didn't even last long because he, he didn't even try to unravel the twine to tie him up. He just like wrapped it and then that was it. It was ridiculous. And, and they, the one thing and about it was have... if he was really going to go after the eye, why didn't he fucking grab a screwdriver out of the box and go after oh. him? That's the other thing. <laughs> so he just comes into the oh, ring. Me. He's got he, a pliers he, in he his hand. The fucking eye. Listen, yeah. what, what the fuck was that eye? What was that? Like a fucking painted ping pong? Like, what the fuck was that? Was we'll, like get, we'll get ball. to that thing. We'll get to that thing. <laughs> we'll get, like, um, and then Seth, you know, the one thing that irritated me, and then DVD Freak, you can go on if you want, this, like, Mysterio was grinding Rollins' eye into the freaking steps, and then he just kicks him in the balls, and then <clears throat> that's it. That's it. So then, you know, a minute later, it's the opposite. Rollins is grinding his thing. And then he just like falls down, his, and then you hear the fucking announcer go, "His eye is out." And then they ring the fucking bell. I was like, "Wait a second, what?" Like I don't see, I don't see an eye. And then Seth runs away and pretends like he, Seth runs away and, and is like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up!" Like he's gagging like in the corner. I'm like, "There's what?" I was just, this is so fucking stupid. It was, I can't even believe they put this shit on TV for us to fucking watch and pay for. Like next, I want to know what the fuck happened. What mm. kind of world do we fucking live in where there's a wrestling match where you have to rip out somebody's fucking eye out of their fucking skull <laughs> to win? Right. Yes. Like, yes. and then well, it's just like, what happened? Like, how did we get is, to this point? My thing is, they said that it, this is how I figure is like, we're going to have an eye for an eye match and I'm not going to, you know, settle until I fucking pull your eye out. And then they were just like, Oh shit, we can't go back now. Cause we already said it, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's one of those things they already announced it. So I had to sit there for a fucking month trying to figure out how they're going to fucking do this shit. I it's, never, seen, you know, I the, never, the thing about this though, you know, the way the fucking match ended too was the way they really fucking started this feud. It's like, yeah. you know, at least being right. innovative with the fucking match. But, on the other hand, this may, uh, you know, this is just my biased opinion, this may just lead to a feud between Seth Rollins and Ray's son. Yeah. My thing, another thing that um, Brian Alvarez from Wrestling Observer had tweeted out during the thing, is like, it's supposed to be an eye for an eye match, and these two guys are in there doing, like, head scissors and takedowns and arm drags and stuff like that. They're not going out there and, like, actually trying to fucking brawl, which I was like, that makes fucking sense. Why aren't they going out there trying to fucking kill each other? Do you think and fucking you- Terry, Terry Funk and Dusty Rhodes went out there fucking doing, you know, arm drags and <laughs> shit like that? I mean, come on, yeah. man. This should have been 10 seconds long. All you gotta do is go like this 
and then put your fucking fingers into their head and rip it out. Like, see, see, this is uh, uh, the professional wrestling world was not particularly happy with this. This is fucking just is just like a giant adult cartoon. Wait, like wait everybody, everybody, shit. Oh honest. god, yeah. oh, I god. was on Twitter throughout the entire event watching Twitter. I mean, you know, Twitter's a pretty fucking toxic environment as it is. Yeah. But it's like, but you know, it's fucking, um, like everybody that was complaining about this match had a valid fucking point. Actually, anybody that was complaining okay. about the fucking show had a valid fucking point. Okay, then how well, I don't understand why I have a different opinion. Okay. Someone, as in watch WWE, I, did, I knew something about this storyline. Mm-hmm. I wrote in my notes. I was watching the match. Okay, I had a uh, with my with my view. Just like, okay, what am I, am I gonna like this or hate this? I mean, come on, you got Seth Rollins, who's good in the ring. You have Rey Mysterio, who was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. He's okay, one of the greatest of all time. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, I may exactly. not be, yeah, he um, really is. What I, I, okay, I haven't watched WWE in a while. I, this seemed more violent. It had a lot of violence to it, and that's something I have not had seen in a lot recently in WWE. The thing they had a lot of realism to it. That this yep. is just my, this was just my opinion. Watching no. not, not watch after not watching this for a while, there was a Falcon Arrow on the apron that looked pretty fucking sick. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, that's what I I there and there was some there was some violence in this match. Granted, it was toned down violence. But uh, yes. there was, I heard someone say, uh, what, Seth saying, like, uh, I don't, you're never going to see the sunset again or some shit. He was calling him a son, he was calling him a son of a bitch. He, you know, he was yeah. telling him, like, well, you're never going to be able to look at your kids. I was like, damn, he's hitting below the belt. Like, someone tells right. me that shit, I'm going to, like, I'm going to, you know, want to kill you. Well, so, you know what? I, I will give props. I mean, there was a couple spots in that match that I did enjoy. Like, I enjoyed the, the Falcon Arrow spot on the apron. Yeah. And then Rey Mysterio, not once, but twice, doing a slide under the fucking ropes into, like, some sunset flip into the barricade. Which I thought was okay. It was cool. But, I mean, at, at the same time, this is an eye for an eye match. You know, yeah. I, I, you take a fucking pen and you'd be like, here. I'd rather have Vic Grimes sit on my face and break my fucking skull, you know? <laughs> I think the number one it, it thing... Little... Uh, the number one thing that I took away from this is that these two could put on a really good match one-on-one. And mm-hmm. it was just fucking wasted for some yeah, yeah. stupid Vince McMahon creation of a gimmick. Yes, match. yes, yes. Hold on, let's that's, not forget. That's let's not forget. This, this... This wasn't a Vince McMahon creation. No, 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 no. This was ripped right out of AEW's book. <laughs> Vince wow. McMahon creation? No. The only thing he does is improvise it and try to make it look better, even though it's still shit. Yeah, wasn't Moxley wearing a rock and an eye patch for a minute? Right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, true. I yeah, yeah. For that's, yeah, because he got spiked in the eye from uh, that guy. And he was keeping Jericho. it case. Bro, his name on that second. Jericho cruise, <laughs> yeah, I, I I saw like on that Jericho cruise, he was rocking the patch throughout the whole like the whole time. Oh, he sold like, that shit in real life, like he was like he was old school about it. You know, he sold that shit yeah. in real life. So that's always a plus when you got an old school guy like that. Um, speaking of the the toned down violence, I knew, I do know that um, DVD freak you had posted on Facebook that it was actually uh, it was a t- TV fourteen. As opposed yeah. to P- as opposed to like they're always PG, they always post that it's you know rated PG before they go on the air. So that's saying something that there was going to be some violence, toned down violence. But really, I didn't even know. When notice it comes to violence in yeah. wrestling, I just want to see blood and you know maybe like another spike to an eye or something like that. That's why I watch different wrestling outside of you know this garbage. I don't know if I want to like this might have. This might have been the show that convinced me to cancel my WWE subscription for finally. I've canceled know. it. Uh, I've canceled it so many times. Yeah, but the funny thing is, by the time the next pay per view pops up, that's when I subscribe again. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know so, what? I thought about it, but I just love watching old. If stuff. it wasn't for all the archived footage from the seventies and eighties, then I'd probably yeah. give it up. Like the old Mid Atlantic, the old yeah. NWA World Championship Wrestling. Um, you know, and now soon the, the Evolve library is going to be up there pretty soon. 
you know, I'd probably so what is? evolve because they purchased evolve what a couple weeks ago, the deal was finalized. So, yep. you know, if it wasn't for like all this shit, then that's probably I would fucking cancel. But there's always a little something that'll keep me spending my nine ninety nine a month. So anyways, what was the next We match? spent a lot of time on that match. That was a lot of fun. Asuka and Sasha. And the ending of this was some fucking Vince Russo bullshit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bro. Holy Listen, shit. This match was, was undecided. Good because this match wasn't even decided. Bailey just mm-hmm. basically took the referee's shirt and was like, I'm going to count three. One, two, yeah. three. Yes. You know, and we got the bell the ring, but we didn't get no official call from the announcer and the winner and the new yeah. Raw Women's Champion. No. Because, listen, when you look at Sasha Banks, you got to look at all her title wins on pay-per-view. She's only won despite the tag team titles. She's only won one Raw Women's Championship on a pay-per-view out of the four that she's fucking won. This was a good match leading up to the finish. I thought it was good up, up until the Vince Russo shit right there. Yeah. yeah. And so, on, Wiki, uh, on Wikipedia, on not that this means anything, but on Wikipedia, <laughs> it has Bailey as the clear winner and new champion. What? Yeah. Really? Somebody posted that on Twitter. A bunch of people posted it. I know. Already? Uh, yeah. Already, huh? Wow. You I'm know, hoping that like that... Wrong. um. Something is situated by Friday night. I'm sure some bullshit will happen. They're gonna, or it's gonna be one of those things where what the fuck's her name? Is? Sasha walks around with the belt for you know a month, claiming that she's a champion, while Oscar's act the actual champion like next month. I'm yeah. Like, no, wait. I'm sorry. Did I get there? Oscar. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So then, say you know Monday, and then they'll fucking probably do it at like SummerSlam or something like that. You know. Um. My bad. I I, th- I think I said Bailey instead of Sasha Banks. The alcohol. Yeah, it's all right. You know, it's cool. I get things wrong all the time. You know, who says tomato, tomato. <laughs> Cheers. I'm there sorry. You go. There you go, man. There you go. I'm so, still uh, up. Cheers. I'm drinking Gatorade. Cheers. But I'm I'll tell you still... something. That's Monday, a cure for the hangover. Mon- there, I was going to say Monday. I talked to JJ Monday morning. I got up and fucking went and bought two gigantic things of Gatorade and went and got tacos. And then next thing you know, like two hours later, I felt like a new fucking person. I was (laughs) recovered. I'm never drinking that shit again uh, until SummerSlam, probably. I need to get through that shit. I need to get through that shit. So, (laughs) So, if it's anything, if it's going to be anything like tonight, (laughs) so so the uh, the WWE, what's that? Watch. Is there a way we can all like watch and do a live review? I am looking and, on oh, how to do that. Unless any of you, uh, any of you other gentlemen, know how to do all that stuff, I was trying to. I mean, out we, how to go we, live. we could all we could always just record Skype, and all four of us are just watching it. Yeah, well, we and do like live reaction, reactions. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, one of my friends had four asked hours. me. He had asked me. I told him, "Oh, yeah, I was doing the podcast tonight," and he's like, "Oh, oh." Is, are you doing it live? I'm like, oh, well, no. I'm like, I told him, you know, we were, I told him how, it, you know, you, you do it, Rick. And he's like, oh, yeah. okay. And then it just gave me the idea. It's like, oh, wow. Well, if there's someone out there that wants to see it live. So, yeah, I mean, no, I thought about that. I thought about that, about going, like, finding a way to, uh, you know, stream us live. And then obviously you can be uploaded after. I, I'm not, I'm looking into that information still. So, I mean, right YouTube, YouTube, you have to have a certain amount of followers in order to go live. So then I would have to figure out a way to connect all four of us, which I'm not that smart when it comes to that stuff anymore. I used to be really yeah. tech savvy, but not today. So anyways, <laughs> what was the, next one? the Drew McIntyre and the uh, oh, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> oh, this match. Um, OK, so I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, we live in a world in professional wrestling where it's not treated like a sport. It's just treated like complete bullshit where the wrestlers control everything that happens on the television. There's no promoters that say, oh, no, this is not a sanctioned bout or, oh, no, contract signing. Oh, no, you know, they don't treat it like it's professional. They treat it like it's a fucking soap opera. And the fact that it's like, oh, no, there's going to be a stipulation and Dolph Ziggler's going to put everything in his fucking favor. 
fucking stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's like, Here this shit started <laughs> in the attitude. Oh, sorry, DVD freak. This, this shit started in the fucking attitude era uh, with all that shit, but then it just carries over and gets more and more and more absurd as the years go on. This might, away in here? this might be me thinking too much about this, but if he could pick any stipulation, what if the stipulation was all I have to do is touch you and I win? Or I have to cough and I win. Right. Like, well, I mean, look at the finger poke of doom. You get yeah, just, like, yeah. I thought that's kind of where it was going because I'm, yeah. but they're not that fucking smart. But I was just like, this doesn't make sense. Like, you can literally yeah. make the stipulation anything you want. The first person that breathes wins the fucking title. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I thought of, I was just like, oh, so it's not going to happen. Drew's just going to try to wrestle this super technical match. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's what he's going to do. Uh, but I do love the belly to belly throw that he gave uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler, he looked like he was having trouble latching on to him at first before he threw him, but then he got him and threw him and it ended up being a really good fucking throw and I loved it. So um, it was, uh, besides the stupid stipulations, it really wasn't that. Bad. I mean, it wasn't fucking Flair selling Steamboat. On, Let's get serious. That typical good selling on Dolph, man. I mean, come on. You know, I, yeah. Dolph's gonna deliver every match. Man. Yeah. Like, I think that's the reason. Like, um, while well, why Dolph in this last four months, five months that we've been in this pandemic is getting such a push because he's uh, he's been a really good hand. You know what I mean? He stepped up the plate because. Who else are going to have Drew necessarily go at? You know what I mean? As far as that shit goes. So they have Dolph Ziggler in there. And not that he's not a good wrestler and not a quality hand. He is a really good quality hand. But you get what I'm saying here, gentlemen? Like, yeah, no, I like, totally get what you're saying. It should have been pushed to the moon a long time ago. I don't understand. You know, what it's like a start stop. I don't understand what happened. Um, right. I, I don't know. But uh, it, and aren't there other, there's a lot of wrestlers. Right, that were, you know, uh, on the main, that were upper card. They're not yeah. around right now because of the virus. Am I right? Yeah, a lot of guys are not coming in. You know, it's not the same guys that were before the pandemic. There's a few guys missing. So, like I said, it's like Dolph Ziggler has basically stepped up in filling that role in, in a lot of the matches. And it, it's a respectable thing, you know. Uh, Dan? You like you're about to explode. You got something to say? Yeah, you okay? <laughs> you all right? You need a couple of like, bumps of coke to sober up? <laughs> not that I know anything about that. You know what? I might, I might this is to talk not a, a family-friendly show. No, you know, this whole... Let's just put it this way. This whole fucking pay-per-view was a fucking swamp. It really was. It was a fucking disaster from the start. Is that is that a pun? <laughs> is that a pun? Damn, got me. Um, but anyway, I'm not gonna lie. I I thought this was the best match of the night. Um, you know, I just love some of the uh some of the spots in this match. Obviously, we've seen another low blow by Zoff Ziggler. Um, the table spot finally gets some table action. Um, and the finish really, uh, you know, actually, no, something that really got me laughing was Dolph Ziggler yelling at Drew, why won't you die? You know, <laughs> I was yeah. like, this is, I, I kind of chuckled, but I'm just like, that was taken from some like 80s action movie. Like, like, like that's like straight from some 80s action movie. It was kind of comical. I really just like burst out laughing during that part. This, uh, for what it was. You know, the ridiculous stipulations and all the stuff. I didn't think this was, like, that bad of a match. But, no. You know, I, I, what I, saw, he, I did. He should have gone for the eye. Yeah, there you go. He would have survived. <laughs> man, DVD freak, your, your, your videos, man, your, your sense of humor. Man. I have, a very, I have a very dry, offensive sense of humor. Don't offend me. Is, I love it. And that is more than welcome here, sir. I'm a yeah, Monty man. Python fan, so that should tell you everything. So we gotta, we gotta <laughs> talk some more. We gotta talk more now. I love so. <laughs> that was cool. Um, so I yeah, anyways, but, yeah, um, go ahead. I know. Remember when you said it's not a family, you know, program? I I do joke around about the you know drugs. However, I do not condone 
that's right here. In all, right. and in all, and in all uh, honest, in all seriousness, if you have a problem with drugs, go seek help. That's all I gotta say. Don't uh, be afraid to seek help. If you have, yeah. If you think how you have, how do we get on this? How do we get? Yeah, on this? like I'm sorry. this is. I'm I don't want to say this is no, a I just wanted to throw that because in. It's a, is this because we're this is a pro wrestling podcast? Like, are we trying to well, no. reach out? It's just I'm because sorry. We're going to have Jeff Hardy on next week. Hey, I'm a party animal. And, I, and I'm just saying, I want to fucking, you know, come off as like someone that's like, a, yeah, I just don't want to come off. I used to be before I had kids and got married and all that other shit. I used to fucking well, like, roll, roll, roll. And, but, you know, just uh, be careful with it. That's all I got to say. You know. But anyway, next match. That was very, <laughs> much, that was very mature of you, my friend. I love you. I'm just trying um, to <laughs> Got to be so responsible. This, you're right. Absolutely. Be so drink, cinematic. Uh, drink responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't leave my house when I drink. So anyways... Uh, what was it? The, uh, what the fuck am I trying to say? Oh, the swamp thing, whatever. Um, something. This was the icing on the fucking cake. As if I didn't think the pay-per-view would really get worse. Uh, you know, I've seen some bad wrestling shows. I've attended some bad wrestling shows. I went to an all midget indie show before. Okay. (laughs) Seriously, no offense. I mean, little people. Really? So. Hold on. You well, know hold on, was? hold on, guys. It, it hold on, guys. Was. Hold on. Jake's calling. He wants his fucking snake back. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, the one thing is about this midget show, Joel Gertner was there. That was like the name oh. on the fucking show. <laughs> so, um, this match was fucking ridiculous. I'm not into these cinematic matches at all. I know some people really love the taker aj thing and i'm just like you know uh, you didn't like that. what's that buddy you none of you like that match that taker ah uh, aj was, match uh, you know a lot of people it went over really well with people uh not just necessarily myself it, it didn't go okay. over well with me but there a lot of people loved it um i thought it was just you know if Vince McMahon could not do wrestling altogether, he would. He would do little bursts of shit like this for 15, 20 minutes at a time. But he's got a three-hour time spot on Monday and a two-hour time spot on Friday. He's got no choice but to do wrestling because he, he can't make movies every week. The ending, though, I really did enjoy it when they kept coming out of the water and came out of the water with a mandible claw. And I still don't know what the fuck happened because they were in the dark, so I was like, whatever. What I really liked um, was they actually, they were trying to sell the end of the pay-per-view because they put the little logo, like, all rights reserved. That was yeah. cool. That was cool. Little and details then, like that help. But, I mean, I think the biggest problem with cinematic matches is this is a wrestling show. I want to see wrestling. I want to see... That's AJ, I want to see AJ Styles versus like a 2005 Undertaker, you know? Oh, and, oh my God. Oh, I mean, be, that, that'd be wow. amazing. And I was yeah, disappointed. Be- I just don't like cinematic matches. If I wanted a cinematic match, I'd just go watch a movie. But I'm here to watch pro wrestling. But that's, so, exactly, that's exactly what I'm saying. I enjoyed the John Cena, Bray Wyatt, Firefly Funhouse match. If just I because that was... It was so if meta. I, had, I enjoyed it. If I had dropped some acid, I'd probably fucking enjoy that fucking scene, you know? <laughs> but I'm not 19, and I have not done that shit in years. So, <laughs> but, but, you know, I it rather was a little too out there. Watch. Go ahead, I, uh, Mushrooms. <laughs> oh, I had, those are some... I don't know what we're talking about. This is gonna get an explicit rating before we post this shit. Go this ahead. is Jesus. this is gonna turn in. This is gonna turn into like a, an intervention by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your thoughts on the cinematic match? Right. Oh, oh boy. Um, I couldn't tell if I was watching. I, I couldn't tell if this was in Bray Wyatt's swamp or Matt Hardy's Lake of Reincarnation. I couldn't tell. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I was thinking that too. You, you seen the fiend come back at the end, and then Alexa Bliss comes out of nowhere, like Braun. 
Brian, you know you want me. Like, I don't mind oh. that. I really don't. Alexa Bliss, like, you know, kudos. You know, God forbid, that? you can that be in my dream, you can be in my night. Who knows? Listen, as long as I'm able to pull you out like Freddy Krueger, I'm fine with that. I'm very fine with that. But uh, somebody called Jake Roberts. He wants his fucking snake back. And <laughs> the one thing that really pissed me off, the one thing that the really, the one thing that made me say I'm done was uh, Braun coming face to face with uh, his past. You know, getting hit. You know, he's basically hitting himself with a fucking shovel. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Can we appreciate the fact that somebody was lit on fire right next to a, a creek and he didn't jump into it? <laughs> <laughs> he just ran around like an idiot. <laughs> that was kind of awesome, actually. Some rowdy moments in this. Uh, it, I, it, it, I took it for what it was. Um, like I kind of enjoy the cinematic matches i try to i understand like yeah don't get me wrong like you said um i agree with what you said about the aj styles versus you, know, you want to watch wrestling i get that however you know with with this with what's going on in the world with virus and everything you got to kind of do things a little different here and mm-hmm. i i like how I kind of like, you remember that one cinematic match that was in NXT when, uh, what was his name? Uh, he, uh, he came out as Negan, uh, Velveteen Dream. Velveteen up, Dream, yeah. Jesus Christ. I, yeah, 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 that, that was, was only, what, cinematic that was the match. first show that we did together. Yeah, yeah, it was, was it? Yeah, and that was great. I loved it. Um, yeah, and then I liked the, well, this thing, this one was a little ridiculous. I tried to enjoy it. I I was I am a big Bray Wyatt fan. I'm, I'm the fiend. I'm a, I'm a fiend Mark. I'm a Bray Mark. I, I'm a Mark there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, sorry. But it could have been better. I, I but I, I I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. And that's all I'm gonna. So, so I but yeah. But going back to the AJ Undertaker, I enjoyed the realness of it. Like. Uh, AJ was calling Undertaker Mark, and Taker was calling AJ Allen. It, it added that realness element to it, and, and that I I enjoyed it. That and um, you got to keep in mind that was a cinematic match. Obviously, it was done in in cuts, and you know you had to do cuts, you know cut, you know set up. Does isn't that better for Undertaker as far as like isn't it easier on his body? Doing matches like that? I think the biggest problem I have with that match is, let's say that is The Undertaker's last match. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd rather see him in the ring for his last match. Me too. Yeah. Me too. But you figure maybe he can do a couple more WrestleManias in cinematic matches, then call it and have his final match in a ring in front of 100,000 people like he, should, like he deserves to go out. My my son was actually asking me about him today because he came across the TV and he asked me if he was retired. I was, ah, I was like, according to rumors, he is retired. And he said he does not believe that he'll, he's retired. That he'll probably come back at least at WrestleMania for a match, which is very possible. And if he does, then that may be his last match. The, the, the okay. way I see it, the, the way I see it is he started almost 30 years ago at Survivor Series 1990. Why not finish at this year's Survivor Series 2020? And don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose a last opponent for Undertaker for his, you know, re, you know retirement match, like this is like his final match for good, I would probably say Kane. That's been done, but... <laughs> Right. I, I think that there's a special I think there's a special bond there uh between the two, but um between the two as like, you know, they they've worked together for so long. But one of the things I think of is that you probably should put some younger new. We talked over. about this and I said Alistair Black. 
Remember? That's a f- we yeah, uh, that is. I think that might have been the first show we did together. Yeah. And so. because, it was the first show all three of us did. And okay. I said Alistair Black and somebody else said Damien Priest. Uh, I said Damien Priest. That was probably, yeah, I could see that, uh, you know, Alistair Black, I think that they're really grooming him to, to, to be a top, top guy. You really? know, and Are they really? So. Are, are they really? Grooming? I mean, yeah. I mean, what the, why, like, you know, I mean, he's one of the fucking best they have on the roster. And, you know, I know I say that a lot, but this is true. So, I mean, this is, you Wait, know, he, he they, is one of the best that they have on the roster. Look, they, he looks good. What's that? Is he being booked very well? I think so. Like, I mean, he's, he's okay. usually booked very strong. I mean, the way that I look at it. Oh, man. I'll have to... I mean, when I do tune, tune, tune into Raw, which is so fucking rare these days, but, you know. Uh, yeah. Is he even still on Raw? Yes, maybe not. Minute. Nobody knows, see, because we don't watch Raw. I just, <laughs> I'm throwing this WWE shit out. We're not doing this again. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this goes to the whole plan for August that I was going to talk to you guys about. It's just going to go out the window. So, anyways. You know what's that? that? I, well, I no, said, I, I, I love doing the retro. I think that I love... I do love WWE. Don't get me wrong. It's like, it's been going downhill for fucking years. WWE is basically the product that every fan gets into as they're like young, at least since 1984. Yeah, you know, it's the first thing. Prior to that, it could have been wherever you fucking lived. If you were NWA territory, AWA territory, whatever. As an adult, we're going from 1984 forward. It's WWE. So it's like there's always going to be this a love and appreciation for WWE. WWF, whatever, no matter how bad it is, there's always some small thing. And it's not like they do scoop up some really great talents, but they, it's just how they fucking use those talents and how they use all those wrestlers that gets that super fan and you fucking disappointed and in their product because they're just trying to rake in the millions and not book a quality product. They just want more eyeballs on their TV. They want more little kids. They want more yeah. you know, women. They want more guys of this age to all tune into their product. As a business standpoint, you, yes. I, I hate saying this, but hey, you want the kids because then, you know, little Jimmy and little Timmy are going to be like that, take me to, and then mom and dad and the kids are going to go, and that's how many, how much money in tickets, then you get to get you know, refreshments and t-shirts. That's easily a few hundred dollars just in yeah. just a, an evening. That's before, that's right. That's like when you have tickets and then after you get to the arena. You know what I mean? Between snacks, merchandise, t-shirts, all that shit. So then you yeah. got to pay for parking in most cities. Well. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, like mean, yeah, at the Rosemont, you got to pay 20 bucks. Don't so even give don't even get me started on how much this DVD collection costs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the super fan right there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you find them. Uh, now, this is a question I probably should ask. Do you buy them all like brand new when they came out or the majority of them? Or did you um, actually, you know, find them for you know, thrift stores for a few bucks, FYE for a few bucks? Dude, I, FYE and eBay. Those are my two saviors. Um, yeah. That's um, I've been buying them new since 2007. Anything okay. before that, I mostly got on eBay, or if I, you know, saw them used at FYE, I snatched them. Yeah. But um, fuck Amazon. I hate Amazon with a passion. Nope. So um, eBay all the way. Everyone yeah. always asks me where I got my DVDs and where I recommend. eBay, I think, is always the best. You just got to know what you're buying. You can find them dirt cheap on eBay a lot of times, and then if you pay attention, the majority of the time the seller is offering free shipping. eBay really tries to push uh, their sellers to use uh, free shipping. I don't do that shit because I can't. You know, I'm not paying three dollars to ship something. But you know, you ever whatever. Pawn shop DVD freak? You know, What's that? I couldn't hear you. What you, you said? Ever tried pawn shops for DVD DVD free? Um. I've made a, a few videos going to pawn shops, but the ones around me aren't that great. I found some good TNA DVDs at pawn shops, but that's about it. 
I came across a couple of uh, wrestling D- WWE DVD, an Undertaker one and a, re- a cu- couple other ones. I forget. And uh, I got them each for a dollar at a pawn shop by my house. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Yeah, I, I get really lucky at uh, pawn shops and at thrift stores. I, I, I never pretty- find. I never find like wrestling related merchandise in um, in Goodwills or anything like that. But last year, I walked into a Goodwill randomly by where I used to by where I grew up. I just happened to be in that area, and they had like a whole shelf full of WWE DVDs. Oh, I, bought, I literally for like two bucks each. I would have bought them all, but I'm just like the whole shelf was probably like hundred dollars worth of shit. So I was like, mm, my wife would have killed me. I would have at least. <laughs> I would have went. I would have got at least. Of them. But to be no, honest but, with you, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily collect uh, WWE DVDs. But you know, they had other things that, that that they produce, such as like you know ECW DVDs, like that, or like um, collections of certain guys that I probably would have bought stuff like that. So I would have picked out the good ones and yeah, picked out like which ones I can flip on eBay. That's what I would have done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, um, yeah. you know, people can say the network all they want. But there's nothing like having WrestleMania 17 in the flesh, you know? Wow, yeah. yeah. You're it's right. just, I, there's there's nothing like having it in your hands and saying, yeah, I, still, I got this. I still buy physical Some media all the time. A lot of people don't. A lot of people are pushing streaming services and stuff like that. I buy physical media all the time. It's not necessarily certain, you know, I, I it's only certain things though, these days. You know what I mean? I like to collect indie wrestling DVDs, you know? I like having it's tangible. I like having yeah. something I can touch. Yeah, you know, I and I, I'm like that. A uh, couple I know a few other of my friends are like that. Instead of streaming it, we we also want it on DVD or on Blu-ray, a right. physical. You know, and yeah, you know, but everything is plus. Uh... Plus, when it comes to, like, buying DVDs, it kind of makes it more of a challenge, especially when it comes to, like, the more rare DVDs. So it's like you either go on eBay or you may come across it at, you know, like a local FYE, you know, maybe even like a Walmart or a Goodwill. And, yeah. you know, it just makes that strive, you know, keep going. Like, all right, I need to have this DVD. Like, I need this right. in my collection. And then you go towards the fact of, all right, if you're a mm-hmm. WWE collector, obviously, you know, some of them want to collect all the the pay-per-view years, you know, get the complete sets. Like, you know, this year was my first year I completed in uh, 2009. And I'm about two DVDs shy of completing 2007 and maybe like two DVDs away from 2016 and 2003. So I want to start going back and getting some of the older ones. So like 2001 is a little bit more challenging, uh, especially with WrestleMania 17. Um, is it really that hard to find? Oh, yeah. Really? I mean... WrestleMania 17, you can probably find one brand new or at least in new like condition for at least $75. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, man. I have two copies of WrestleMania 17. I found one for $4.99 at a Suncoast one time. I think I saw your video where you said that. Yeah. And luckily, I have a girlfriend that's very supportive. She just bought me one of the ECW Pioneer DVDs. So uh, that's a that's a keeper. <laughs> those are not easy to come by. They're they're some of the first early era of the DVD. Yeah, I got a Guilty yeah. as Charged two thousand one. One of my favorite ECW pay per views. <clears throat> yeah, so that's coming. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome, Rick. That's, that's very hey guys. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, it is ten o'clock. All right, JJ. Um, I. I'll probably be back about ten thirty, ten forty. If we're still here, then you know. I, yeah. Feel um, free then to I join drink, in. Then, then I can drink, and you know, <laughs> we can have some real fucking fun. If these are on, awesome. If not, yeah, my loss. My loss. That's all right, man. But it, it was. I had buddy. fun. I had fun. Of it's good to see all of these guys. Hopefully, we can all do this next weekend. Um, Absolutely. But I, I really hope you are on when I come back. I really do. Much love all right, to all man. you guys. All right. All right, buddy. I'll like, talk to you later. Do I, all right. Do I just escape out of this thing? Hit the red button like you're hanging up the phone. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. Didn't we go through this last week? 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> hit your hit your screen, and then the red button on the bottom is basically it, the hang up. It's button. a steel cage. You gotta escape. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, I love this stuff, man. It's good time. So I felt I felt bad I couldn't drink, and I feel bad having to leave. But we have That's plenty cool, more buddy. podcasts and Sunday night. Got... Yeah, man. Don't forget next Sunday, Danny. What is it? NWA 70? Is that next NWA week? NWA 70. We're doing NWA 70 next week, so don't forget about that, buddy. Oh. That one I got, I'm looking I, forward to. I got it written down in my notes, bro. But, um, yeah. I, <laughs> bro, it's in my notes. But, um, no, seriously, uh, I'm going to hit you up uh, about 1040, 1045. I'm going to make this real quick. All right, man. All right. It's good talking to you. Much love. All right, JJ. Everybody. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> all right that's nice well, silent, like, like, uh, all right so yeah what are we talking about dvd freak let me ask you a question i don't know if i asked you this last week i was pretty fucking hammered when i we were on so you mentioned that you have about 700 dvds right that might have been before i was really out there Is dude that it, I, that's, it, it's somewhere around there i haven't counted right. in a while um and you said it's not primarily WWE. There's, it's just it, well, it is primarily WWE, but you may have a bunch of other stuff too, right? Yeah, I basically I have like ninety eight percent of the WWE and WWF collection, mm-hmm. and then um, I have about half of the TNA collection. So that's and quite a bit. We need too. I would love to get the New Japan, but it's just expensive because. Well, New Japan is New Japan is my favorite promotion that's currently running. Yeah, I, so uh, I don't. It sucks. There you go, Danny. Yep, there you go. They were charging. I know because I was watching. Um, I watch that High Spots live feed every week on Facebook where they're selling their merch, and then when it's DVD hour, they're charging thirty dollars for each New Japan DVD, and I was like. It's a nice DVD, but I don't. I don't like spending thirty dollars on on a DVD. You know. Yeah. Or else that's I, 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 I would have bought. What's that? I, I don't, I'm not sure if you've seen this, Rick, but something that I have that I bought from High Spots is a brand new sealed WWE DVD from 2002. And at that time, they were selling it for four dollars. You go on High Spots now; it's about twenty four. And it is the uh, the Hulk again. The Hulk still nice. rolls DVD, still sealed, but. What's so special about this DVD, it comes with the uh, two-song sampler from WWF. Wow. Not oh, even I what, have that. So there you go. What They were selling that for $4? Man, I should have snagged that when I would see that at FYE all the time. $4. Now, you know, the FYE by me used to sell, used to have tons of DVDs. I used to buy wrestling DVDs all the time. At the time, I would always pass up, like, the WWE DVDs, like the Hogan DVDs and shit like that. I'd always go for, like, the more obscure stuff. But you know what? That Hogan DVD is definitely worth the buy because that's practically like the only Hogan documentary you're ever going to get from WWE. You think? Yeah. Um, I loved his unreleased matches DVD. That's a great set. It has house shows. It has stuff that's never been released. Stuff that's probably not even on the stupid network. So, I mean, DVDs all the way. Definitely. There was a DVD that came out on um, that that came out by WWE probably two three years ago. It was like a, a similar format, but it was like WWE on the released matches. I don't know if you remember that one. You have it. Look at this. He's got it. He's gonna reach behind and grab it's it. It's one of my favorites, man. It's one of my favorites. Um, I really need to get a copy of that because I saw they put a couple matches up on YouTube uh, promoting that and stuff. And have you actually opened it and watched it? Yes. Um, Do you like the uh, the turtles match, the tur- the tag team match? <laughs> Dude, I I love everything on that set because I'm a huge Golden Era fan. Yeah, you know, Me, uh, well, I grew up during that period. Yeah, because what is it? 80, 85 to ninety six. No, it's eighty six yeah. to ninety five. That to me, okay. like, that's gold. This DVD. You know, being someone that reviewed all the DVDs, it was getting old. And this was just yeah. something that was refreshing because it's new content. Right. That's never been released. Like, there's stuff on here that you can't get on the network. And something that has 
Andre and Heenan on the, you know, one of the panels. It's just gold. Right. I, I consider this one of their best releases. I'm going to have to. I, I, I wanted to get it at that time period, but I always thought it was a little bit pricey. Maybe if I look now, I don't know if I can find it on eBay cheaper enough. But maybe. I don't know. I, I haven't tried, but I also wasn't buying a lot of DVDs at that time, at least wrestling related. So, I mean, if I see a cheap one, I'll send it your way, man. Yeah, absolutely. So what else I, do we talk I, about? I, I still usually stuff. see those. Uh, I see those DVDs um, still brand new, actually, on Target for about twenty. I mean, it's still yeah, kind of pricey. Fair, but... Yeah, that's, something I fair price, I guess, because I don't really spend more than that on a lot of things. But you know, something like that that I've been wanting for a long time, I probably should just bite the bullet and buy it. it the harsh reality of it is. Um, you know, me and my girlfriend moved in together. We pay rent. I have a new car yeah. that I pay car payments on and insurance. Yeah. I just can't really afford the stuff I want to buy, like New Japan. I would love right. to get those imported, but I, I just can't. Like, that's the unfortunate yeah. reality. Like, I I have responsibilities and bills. It sucks. Um, I know High Spots sells some of that. Uh, do you shop on High Spots at all? Have you? No, I've never even been on there. No. Oh, oh. God, that's Dan and I's favorite site. We freaking, I just spent $300 on that site. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just waiting for that to come. But, you know, uh, t- they sell tons of DVDs uh, from any promotion you're looking for. It's going to be there. They've got tons of autographs. Uh, just about nice. anybody. Just about anybody you can think of. And, uh... figures. They got all sorts of, and they do a live feed on Facebook every Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Like a live gimmick table. They'll just pull out stuff and like, hey, we're offering this. You know, it's this much on the site. It's however many dollars cheaper, you know, on this particular night. You just got to comment on Facebook. And they'll send you an invoice. Bam. And then, so you get a lot of really good deals off them. It's, you know, I have um, some New Japan DVDs, like non-commercial DVDs that uh, from them. I don't have any, like, the commercial ones. I, it, recent ones. But they're definitely worth like that site is definitely worth watching. You probably find a lot of really interesting stuff on there that you might want to collect. Right. Well, whenever you say autographs, that's automatically me. So yeah, listen, yeah. DVD freak. I mean, if I ever come across another uh, New Japan DVD, um, I'm definitely going to send it your way. So no worries. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll definitely check it out. I just don't really have too much extra money to spend right now. That's the issue. Right. Dude, I totally, I totally get it, especially after this last high spots order. So I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, when that does arrive, I'm going to be doing a live video, an unboxing video, and uh, That's cool. I usually do it, you know. And um, I haven't done an unboxing video in quite some time, actually. The last couple of things are just kind of just opened up and just said, "I fuck the video." Because... Well, hey Rick, uh, what, what's that nice uh, picture you have there behind you? Dan sent was nice enough to send me this lovely. Sting autograph picture. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. I saw the post you made about it. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, I have and a... then I got this this um, uh, Lex Luger one right behind me as well. The Lex Express. <laughs> so, um, I have a Sting autograph card, but you know, that's yeah. definitely really cool. I I always like Surfer Sting over. Um, that's I didn't Crow like the Sting. Crow Sting. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely. Uh, I thought he was a better athlete at, during that time period. It's before he got injured and then kind of slowed down a bit. Not that he didn't have good matches because he still had good matches, but uh, I've, not as good. Yeah. And he was more exciting and it was fresh as the surfers thing. Let, let's yeah. put it this way. His surfer, the surfers thing was definitely better when he developed the, uh, the pro gimmick. Um, obviously he did slow down. Obviously he didn't show the same speed and tenacity as he did when he was, you know, blonde hair, you know, very colorful tires. But once he got to TNA, I, I think he progressed just a little bit. He had but time to point. sit out. He had time to sit out, let his body heal up a little bit. He found oh. Jesus, you know, he, <laughs> so he, you know, I, I'm not mocking the guy, you know, it's not something that I'm into, but I think a lot of all this stuff kind of, he had a couple years off, basically, you know, and he refreshed himself. 
So um, and it was able, and then they did the Joker sting gimmick, which I think was a little bit something more fresh. You know, you gotta change it up every few years. You know, I've heard many interviews saying that Joker sting was just fun for him, and he yeah. deserves that. Yeah. And something I always loved, this might just be the film geek in me, but when they just had him standing in the rafters for how long, just chilling, waiting, that yeah. slow build leading up to uh, uh, his match in 97 against yeah. Hogan, I thought that was awesome. You know, just yeah. chilling, waiting. And you never yeah. really knew when he was going to just drop down. And kick some ass. You never, but, yeah, you never. At the same time, you didn't know whose side he was on, really, until yeah. Yep. Until and you know what? Speaking speaking of slow buildups, one slow buildup that actually happened the same year in '97 was the uh, the feud between Undertaker and Kane that took months <laughs> and months yeah. and months. And then after that, you didn't hear about it for a while. You know, they stopped mentioning him, and then all of a sudden, Bad Blood '97. Ironically, the same pay-per-view that Brian Pillman was supposed to show up and unfortunately passed away. Here comes the big red machine, you know, taking down the Hell in a Cell cage and, you know, just really brought a lot of uh, intimidation and uh, fear as a child. So um, I thought that was a nice buildup, especially leading into WrestleMania 14. Um, I just thought it was great, which is why I kind of brought up Kane's name as it should be Undertaker's last match at Survivor Series 2020, if possible, just because of that buildup. You know, they are kayfabe brothers, and they've basically been, you know, on and off between each other. You know, why not have that as, like, a, a proper send-off? Uh, the Undertaker's name was actually Kane the Undertaker when he debuted. Yep. Right. So, for a while. Which I always thought was interesting. Nobody realizes that. Actually, because I think it was so short-lived that it, nobody remembers it. But I, I, his uh, pay-per-view debut actually was here in Hartford, Connecticut uh, yeah. for Survivor Series. Which is always um, lovely to, to hear stuff like that. This is one of those mundane, useless facts. But The Miz was actually in attendance as a kid for the 90 Survivor Series. Oh, really? wow. Wow. Yep. That's interesting. Here in Connecticut? Yeah. He said he that's, was there at Survivor Series 90. I know he's not. He, he's from Cleveland, but he, he was in Connecticut for some fucking reason. I don't know. People people travel. People travel for pay-per-views. Hey, fuck, I did it before. So. Well, yeah. Survivor Series is my favorite pay-per-view. So um, I, would tra- I would travel for that. Back in the day, it was, you know, because it was a unique... Uh, unique thing but now it's like what they have like two three survivor matches on the uh on the shows nowadays it's, so it's kind right. of well i mean you really got to think about it too like back when it first started in like the 80s and 90s you, you had a couple survivor series type matches um around that time so yeah it, it, it was a unique concept. I think these days the the royal rumble has become my favorite because you never know who's going to be the uh the mystery person to show up, mystery person or two to show up. So that's always kind of, it's not always somebody I necessarily like, but it's always kind of, the anticipation usually kills me as to see who. Uh, this year, unfortunately, I was disappointed on one and then pretty excited for the other. When uh, MVP mu- MVP's music hit, I fucking was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is fucking ridiculous. But then I kind of popped when uh, <laughs> when I heard Edge's music. My wife was like, my wife was sitting next to me. She was like, who the hell is this guy? Like, you don't get it. Never mind. <laughs> you just, that I, kind of thing. I was almost in tears, man. Because yeah. I grew up with him. Like, yeah. and I was there when he retired. Too soon. But when yeah. he, I, I mean, the rumors were pretty rampant. I kind of yeah. expected him to be at the Rumble. But to actually yeah. hear, you think you know me, the crowd goes nuts. That was like I, one of the loudest, loudest pops from a crowd I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, that's one of those few moments that I just sat in silence and was like, you know, yeah. good for you. Good yeah. for you. And he looked like he, when he was standing in the hallway, he had all the, or the, the, the ramp or whatever, they had all the fucking 
smoke around him from the, the pyro and stuff like that. He looked like he was about to, to fucking cry himself because he it was an emotional moment for him as well, being back out there in front of the fans. He loved being out there performing and unfortunately had to retire because of that injury. And I compare it to Brian Danielson. I was at WrestleMania 34 when he came back. And yeah. him being my favorite modern wrestler, that was magic. Being yeah. there for his return, it, it's just indescribable. Yeah. He, he, he's definitely another one of the, like, my top, like, you know, he's definitely Danielson in my, in my top list of uh, favorite wrestlers of all time. He's yep. a phenomenal athlete. I've, I've watched him for fucking, what, two decades now? So, um, yeah. Him... Him, Ben Wan, and Bret Hart, my top three. So. Yeah, I gotta throw, uh, I gotta throw Owen in there, Dynamite Kid, and uh, kind of a little bit of an oddball one. Arn Anderson is like the top, you know. He's yeah. people always choose fucking Flair over Anderson. But I'm like, it's Anderson, and then Flair's underneath him. Flair was the showman. Anderson was a guy that he was the enforcer, literally. So. There's nothing like a spine buster from Arn Anderson. <laughs> right, right, man. I mean, he's done some of the greatest spine busters. One of it, I'm surprised fucking Hogan let him do that to him. That's the other thing. I saw, you know, I was I saw video footage recently of that. That's pretty funny. And even his spine buster in AEW, it's as perfect yeah. as ever. Like, yeah. it's just, oh, uh, it's, nah. it's awesome. Who did he do that on? That wasn't on Tully, right? Or was it on Sean Spears? I'm uh, trying to remember. I feel oh, like it was crap. Spears. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it was Tully. But, yeah, um, that was kind of a magical moment. I got to tell you, as a lifelong Arn fan, I kind of popped when that when I saw that. So that was always that was really enjoyable. Have you been to an AEW show at all? They don't come up here. Uh, okay. they, the closest they came was Boston. And um, I couldn't find anybody to go with me or drive two, three hours to go to Boston with me. So my buddy didn't want anything to do with it. But... You know, they won't come to Connecticut because it's fucking McMahon land. So uh, that, that, that might have that might eventually change, though. I'm, I'm sure over time that'll change. I mean, WCW came here a couple of times and I went to those shows. So the NWA yeah. came in 1989 as well. I went to those. So you I never know what's going to happen. I recommend it. I went to the first Dynamite in D.C. It's only like a two hour drive for me. I highly yeah. recommend going. AEW is a great live experience. I can imagine. I mean, they're a great television product as well, whether it's, you know, even during the pandemic without a full live crowd, they just got, you know, uh, whatever. They got the, the the talent in the stands or whatever. They still know how to put on a really good television product, and that's, that's one of the best television products right now uh, as far as professional wrestling goes. And um, I actually got a picture with Jay Muse, so that was, that kind of made my night. That's that's hilarious. What the hell was he doing there, of all things? Of all, they places? were there. They were there. Um, him and Kevin Smith were there promoting um, now the Game Silent that. Bob reboot. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now I remember that. Yep. And Jay Muse was fucking plastered, just walking around, taking pictures of the people. It was awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm a huge Clerks oh, fan, so uh, Clerks. Yes, uh, I think. Mall Rats is a great movie. It's completely underrated. Uh, a lot of people think that's like the Jedi of the fucking series, but I think it's great. Yeah. I, I, I like some of their other ones, too. Have you ever speaking been to this? Of, oh, go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, speaking of plastered moments, uh, Rick, I've probably told you this story about how I uh, did the Ric Flair strut in front of Ric Flair's car um, that Monday Night Raw. <laughs> um, that's awesome. It was it was so odd because it was like, all right, I'm already buzzed. It was the same Raw that Anderson and Gallows made their in-ring debut against the Usos. Uh, I believe they're an impact right now. Back, um, yep. And Keep um, talking. I'll be right back. it was over. And, uh, you know, me and my buddies, you know, we're walking back to the car. And everybody's running to, like, this black car. Everybody's, like, taking pictures. And I'm looking out. And in the passenger seat is Ric Flair, you know, just giving his, you know, signature smile and everything. Like, oh, yeah, I don't give a shit about you. I'm just here for the pictures, you know. And, uh, boy, I'm not really sure. I don't even recall how many drinks I had that night. But I made sure he was watching me 
in front of the red light, you know, right in front of the crosswalk. And I'm like, yo, guys, watch this. And I'm doing a strut right in front of his car. Oh and all I God. see is the player giving, like, the biggest smile. And his chauffeur is laughing his ass off. And Rick Flair just gives me, like, the thumbs up, like, like, ah, oh, all right. I made your day. So I'm like, whoo. <laughs> that is... <laughs> That is legendary. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I, you know what? I'll, I'll never forget it, too. Because, I mean, as much as I would love to go to other Monday Night Raw shows, that Monday Night Raw show in 2016 was actually my first Monday Night Raw show. Boy, but, I, you know, I would have loved to go into, like, a show back in, like, 2002, 2003, you know, back when, like, WWE was still fresh and relevant. Yeah, and, I feel old. Uh, You're talking one about of those things. One of those things I really wanted to discuss was um, 2002, and I will forever say this: WrestleMania 18 was my favorite WrestleMania of all time. Probably so behind, probably yeah. behind 20 and 23. Those are like my top three WrestleManias. But when you really look at the aspects of 18. A year has already went by. The roster's stacked. You've already inquired WCW and ECW talent. But the only thing that really prevented it from being a really good show were the were the matchups. Now, Hogan Rock, that, that practically made mania that year. But, you know, you look at all the possibilities that could have happened, you know... Kurt Angle went up against Kane that night. Uh, there was rumors going around that there was supposed to be a build-up between Angle and Sting at WrestleMania 18, which that been interesting, especially an early Angle-Sting match at that time when they're still both in their primes. And then... Did, did they wrestle in TNA against each other? Yeah, they did. That, they did. That uh, been one of them, bound, yeah. bound for Glory 2007. Okay. Dan, you yeah. might like this then. I have a, a sealed WrestleMania with the WrestleMania recall DVD on the back. Still oh, sealed. Sick. Yeah, WrestleMania 19 will always be my favorite. And my second favorite, you can judge me all you want, is WrestleMania 8. Um, I don't remember that, uh, who's on WrestleMania. Let's look that up. Um, that was the bad run-in with uh, Papa Shango and an Ultimate Warrior coming in at the end. All right, we're just like going to forget about that, right? Don't talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> um, that was um, Flyer and Macho Man, Bret Hart and Roddy Piper. Okay, yep. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. That was a good show. Yep. Yep. Uh, but WrestleMania 18. Dome. Yep, Hoosier Dome. But WrestleMania 18 was always very underrated. Like, you can take the most minuscule match on there. It was entertaining. Like, I just think the main event really sours it. The fact that they didn't put Hogan and Rock last it really gets a lot of people turned off about it. And I always tell people, watch it again. Give it a chance. It's a great pay-per-view. And I'm going to have to go back and, and watch this. Think- I don't really... I haven't watched it in many years. So I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow is try to give that one a whirl. And, you know, one of my favorite matches on that card really gets talked about but one of my favorite undertaker matches yes undertaker yep. I, I love that you know just the hype of that match and the way that match was going you know you had rick flair in a crimson mask and um arn anderson making a surprise appearance just spine busting the undertaker which was like a mark out moment um I love that match, just, like, front to back. And just, like, the storytelling with, like, you know, Undertaker taking David into the fucking, you know, showers and beating the (laughs) shit out of him. Oh, I loved it. I think that's my favorite Undertaker streak match, to be honest with you. Like, Shawn Michaels, obviously, it's great. (laughs) But my personal favorite is WrestleMania 18. With him him and Flutter, man. That match is just amazing. I love it. I'm, I'm stuck... Between him and Flair and the match he had with Batista at 23, I thought oh, yeah. that was a phenomenal match. That was a great match when it really shouldn't have been because Batista in 2007 was very up and down. Right. But that match, you know, went on below the middle of the card and they wanted to prove something and they fucking did. They tore the house down. They did. 
And I think that was like the only WrestleMania that I could recall, maybe besides 20, that actually had two decently good main event uh, matches with Mm -hmm. Sean and Cena and Undertaker and, you know, Batista. Like, phenomenal. Yeah. um, To me, Undertaker and Batista, that was... For anyone that grew up in the Ruthless Aggression era, that was a dream match. And a lot of people didn't have too much faith in that match because Batista wasn't too polished in the ring, but he could put on a good match. I like Batista, for the most part. And they killed it for 23. All right. (laughs) You guys took that segment very well. So what else, guys? That was uh, uh, pretty hey, interesting. I'm gonna, you're making me want about, to go back and watch some of this stuff, stuff that I haven't seen in years. So that's why I've been Rick, so silent. Something today. that you mentioned, something that you mentioned uh, probably like a couple days ago was us taking turns picking out uh, pay-per-views to review in August, specifically like SummerSlam events. I, yeah, I think that Sunday, I mean, last week we were talking, and I think that for the month of August we should – all pick a SummerSlam event that we particularly want to cover. We'll make the list out. We'll decide whatever week we want to do it. Each of us, DVD freaking, more than welcome to join in. Actually, it'll even that out if you join in. Because then they'll just well, yeah. go ahead and so that'd, that'd be four weeks. Yeah. And one of the weeks. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And then obviously we'll talk about the SummerSlam next month as well. Um, for me, my favorite SummerSlam is 2002. And then 92 is great as well. But I think one that on my channel, I always wanted to review was 2007 because that was so affected by Benoit. There was so many things that were supposed to happen for SummerSlam 2007 that just didn't happen. And I mean, it's not, it's a pretty bad pay-per-view for the most part. Like my one friend who's also a YouTuber, she, that's her least favorite pay-per-view. But I think it's very interesting why it's a bad pay-per-view. Um, but like I said, I think 2002 is my all-time favorite SummerSlam, for sure. That in 1992 at Wembley. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just watched that recently, actually. That's... The era is very strange. It's a very, yep. very strange era for WWE 1992. I definitely right. would, you know, watch it. Uh, but, you know, we're going to... I already so, know the mania. We gotta ask JJ what mania era SummerSlam. Jesus Christ! I keep messing up the pay per view names. I did that all week talking about backlash when I was supposed to be talking about Extreme Rules. Um, <laughs> you probably hear Dan call me out on it at one point. Um, uh, I already think that I'm. I want to do the very first SummerSlam. SummerSlam 1988 is the very. Well, it's one of the earliest pay per views I remember purchasing uh, as a kid. So that's the one that I'm gonna. It's got the Mega Powers, you know, Unite. So, uh, really freaking great tag team title match between Demolition and the Heart Foundation. That's a really awesome one. Remember, I'll probably bring this up as well, but I'll bring it up now. I remember my grandmother sitting on the couch freaking out because the ref was not paying attention. And the heels were cheating and That's just cool. swearing at the TV. And I was just like, she still thinks it's legit. Like, it was awesome, you know? Yeah. So, I really just want to cover... That's the one that I'm going to choose at SummerSlam 88 for my pick. All right. You know, um, it's, it's not just, a really good show. It, on paper, I'm sorry, DVD. On no, paper, cool. it looks like a really stacked like house show or something like that. You know what I mean? Like every star. But then you go out there, how many of these guys are actually past the prime? <laughs> so <laughs> Ken, Ken Patera and Junkyard Dog was just about to leave uh, WWF to go to the NWA, you know. Stuff like that. I'm a huge demolition fan. Like as is this guy right here. I do not what I don't know what the hell I know um I think um, Smash had some issues with Vince, but He yeah, wants I, to go into the Hall of Fame unless they offer him like a certain amount of money. So Well <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that sucks. Yeah. I uh, I loved I would kill to have a demolition D V D of just like twenty of their matches. Oh my god, I would. It would be. I think that that's something that WWE should work on. 
I mean, I'm sure eventually at some point. I mean, before they're completely forgotten about, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was pissed when New Day outlasted their title reign. Oh, my God. I hate the New Day, by the way. Um, but they're just, a com- <laughs> they're just a comedy team, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. They, it's, they weren't necessarily a comedy team until they put them together. Big E was like a big muscle guy. You know, uh, I enjoyed his run in, uh, where's that, NXC. But they're, they're not an entertaining team, really, unless you're like, you know, an eight-year-old kid. So. At, um, at WrestleMania 35, when Kofi won the title, I wanted so bad for them to turn on him. Yeah. I, I wanted that. For that. And the fucking crowd went nuts, like ballistic. Like, yeah, I yeah. almost went. I almost went to that one. I didn't end up going though. Yeah, uh, uh, um, it was a very strange show. Like uh, the seating was fucking horrific. Like the way that it was. So, did you have you the light problem? The yes. problem with the lighting. Yep. I had to watch everything on the screen, so I was like, "Well, at least I'm here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. That's how I. That's how I felt for thirty four because my seats were fucking nosebleeds, but. Yeah. I was reading online the whole time. You know, I was on my phone, and they were just like, oh, people are complaining about the lighting situation. Yep. You couldn't really see shit, so. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not a fan of 35, personally. Um, I tried watching it back a couple days after, because I was there, and I wanted to see. I was just like, it really wasn't that great of an event. I couldn't handle it, dude. I, I had to skip so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, legit, I thought the the opening was... Fucking horrific! The opening to the main show, where it was like you know, uh, Seth and Brock, and then I don't even know where the hell it got from there. But we were, we were seated kind of uh, in cool seats because all the wrestlers would go from the ring and then they would walk back around, and then they were like right in front of us before they would go backstage. They were like right down there, so not a lot of guys just kind of like lingered down there. You know what I mean? Just they would just sit there and pose for photographs for anybody that would walk up and want to take a photo. That's so that cool. was a cool thing. You know, that yeah. was a really cool thing. I got a really interesting picture of DDP. It looks like he wants to kick my ass because I got my phone trying to snap a picture of him. <laughs> so, was he so. uh was, was he, was he in, there? Was he inducted? When did he uh why was Jesus. he there? I don't I can't I remember. I have no idea. I could post the picture because I mean it's definitely him. I'll check uh, the DVD. Hang on, I'm gonna look it up. Hall of Fame was that two thousand nineteen? Nineteen, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Let me see. Hall of Fame. Uh, it is not. Hall of Fame's not included on the DVD, so it's all you. <laughs> I'm trying to Google it, and it's not. Co- oh, because it. Oh, because for some reason it auto corrected the four. Okay. Good job. Uh, okay. Hall of Fame 2019 inductees. I'm trying to remember. I really don't. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, DX was that? Was that the 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 yeah, that, one where Bret Hart got attacked? Oh my yeah. god, I was I was so pissed off. I'm a huge I, Bret Hart fan, man. Yeah, uh, that here. pissed me off. Okay, I, now I'm I'm starting to remember this now. Um, I remember when Bret Hart that thing. All of a sudden, you just see him look over, and then the fucking screen goes blank for a second. What the fuck? Well, that was the same. Know, that was the same guy that attacked somebody else in the ring one time. Yeah, there, there was another incident earlier in the year with him. And I think that it was, was it the, the guy from the Revival? They were walking him, trying to walk the guy out of the ring. You just saw him deck him in the face. And like, that is the <laughs> fucking coolest thing ever. Yep, you just see his cool. head snap back. All right, inductees for 2019. Honk Tonk Man, Tori Wilson, Brutus Beefcake. I really don't remember Beefcake. <laughs> I don't anyone... remember that. Yeah. <laughs> DX, Harlem Heat, and the Heart Foundation. That's, that's in there. Okay. And then the Warrior Award was for... Uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, what, they, they do that huge group thing, too. Where they induct a bunch of different people. I think... This, um... one, was, this one pissed me off because I'm like... The list here, I'm sorry, but some of these people legitimately should have been inducted individually, had their time. The first list, the first name I'm going to list, probably probably the first two, three names I'm going to list, you're probably going to agree with me. Bruiser Brody, 
Yep. Should have had his own induct- induction. Wahoo McDaniel and Luna Vachon. Yeah. They should have right. all had their individual. And then the further down the list, you see Playboy Buddy Rose. I mean, he worked for them for a number of years as preliminary talent, but he was pretty famous. He was a former AWA World Tag Team Champion, L- um, NWA Pacific Northwest Tag Team Champion. So the guy was been around, in, but he was just part of that uh, the recognized accolades uh, inductees, which is just a bunch of shit. And that's insulting for Bruiser Brody to be in that category. Even Wahoo McDaniel be the, the the importance of those two guys in professional wrestling. Yeah. Personal opinion. Yeah, the two I was gonna name was um, Brody and Luna, especially Luna. Man, I that I was one... a huge fan of hers back even before she came to WWE. I, I was a I used to watch her in Herb Abrams UWF when she was managing the Blackhearts and, and stuff like that. So she was a, it, quite the talent. It's just it proves that they're trying to cater to the young audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was, I couldn't believe when I saw Bruiser Brody. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like, yeah, I, my, I was just like, "You're, yeah, exactly." That's exactly how I felt. I was like, "But they don't even put like a profile next to his name. It just says here, held numerous regional NWA championships." I'm like, "There's fucking I think, countless feuds with like bloody feuds with like Abdul the Butcher." I mean, let's get serious, you know? It's like those are some great things. For I'm not, well, a- not only that, but the only thing that kind of pisses me off about that is you can induct Carlos Colon, but you won't induct <laughs> the guy who was killed with that guy in the same fucking room. That makes right. no fucking sense. Well, you might Carlos as well Colon. just induct Gino Hernandez at that point. But Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, you, can, you, you know, there's so many guys that I could think off the back that can deserve such an introduction without there actually being some type of fucking hall of fame or walk of fame, whatever, as uh, Owen's son has said, you know, you know, right. like, his name doesn't belong on a piece of silver for WWE. Hell no. God forbid you fucking killed the guy, practically. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, besides you, you know, before I go on a Owen rant here, um, <laughs> you know, obviously Owen, you know, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. We already know the reasons why. Um, but you really got to think of other people, too. Like, you know, Vader, where's Vader's induction? God forbid, I mean, I he's made so many one, contributions. I think that one will happen. And he has such a crazy career starting in the AWA and then becoming huge in Japan, then coming in WCW and you know, what did we, we recovered an event a couple of weeks ago where it was like his WCW debut the, uh, for NWA, yeah. Great American Bash. Uh, Great American yeah. Bash, 1990. Yeah. So that's, you know, I think that, uh, I think it's only a matter of time because I don't think that he was on bad terms with him because he popped up uh, at one point during that whole, um, that Heath Slater was doing that whole thing where he was like facing the legends and shit like that. And the Vader yeah. was one of the guys. Vader and Sid, you know what I mean? So, and, that's, an- and that's another guy. And that's another guy. You know, Psycho said, despite him not being the best guy to cut a promo, like, can we do it over? <laughs> well, we're live, pal. Like, oh, no. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you gotta really give Sid a lot of credit. I mean, the guy was in the Four Horsemen. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he teamed up with The Undertaker as well, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, so he has uh, his Taker, I believe. I'm trying to remember if that was... Uh, like, you got me on that w- I'm trying to think if it was Danny Spivey in Undertaker or if it was Sid in The Undertaker. I, I don't well, know. It was definitely, go it was definitely Spivey in The Undertaker, but I do recall right. Sid in Undertaker at one moment. Right. Uh, I mean, I could be mistaken. Um, but other than that, you, you know, you really look at Sid, you know, WCW... You know, he's had some on and off, um, you know, deals with, like, WWF and WCW. And then, um, I mean, he's mainly remembered for some of his skits, not the best ones. Um, he held the WWF championship twice within, you know, 96. Um, not the best champion, but um, he really got the hype 
uh, during Survivor Series 96 when he uh, defeated Sean. So oh, I didn't um, realize that there was a third, there was a fourth skyscraper. I'm just looking this up now. <laughs> it was, he wore a mask. He was me and Mike Enos from, or one of the Beverly brothers. So I, I, I don't ever remember a masked uh, skyscraper. Sorry to change, you know, go back on the skyscraper whole thing, but that's pretty interesting. They were only there together for a few months between both the incarnations, 1989 to 1990. Right. So, All right. you know, re- really going back to the Hall of Fame, you know, demolition somewhere down the line, whether it's the original incarnation or whether it's, you know, they involve Crush, which I highly doubt. I only, I, I only want to see it if it's Crush and Smash. So, right. I'm sarc- sarcasm, guys. Um, before we get too off topic, I want to, I need, I need a minute to rant about Vader not being in the Hall of Fame. Go for it, my friend. You know what? He knew he had, the doctors gave him what, two years to live? And that's about, that's about what he had. He wanted the Hall of Fame so bad and they didn't fucking give it to him. He wanted the Hall of Fame. I know there's people like Sabu, even me. Who says the Hall of Fame is bullshit? It's all Vince's picks. It's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, but, it is. But you know what? If Vader wanted it so bad, fucking give it to him. That pisses me He's off honestly, so Yeah. It pissed me off so bad. It's just... It might, oh, God. It, it might be a bullshit thing, you know, the WWE Hall of Fame. It is bullshit. It's just a list of names. There's no Hall of Fame. There's no place for us fans to go say, oh, my God, this is so fucking cool to see. But you know what? It's one of my favorite shows to watch every year. You know what I mean? Just to see the reminiscing, the history, the business. It's a fun time to watch. Now they put it on the network, so it's like these guys get to rant for as long as they fucking want now. But, you know, like Stan Hansen or Hillbilly Jam, who went for almost two fucking hours talking that year. So that, um, <laughs> like, I, I was so pissed. The WrestleMania 34 I went to, I got fucking Goldberg. Uh, Dan, you might recognize how much I fucking hate Goldberg with a passion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, really? That's the headliner I get? I, I got, like, the Dudleys. I think I got Hillbilly Jim that year, but fucking right. Goldberg, man. I was you so had to sit through that. You had to sit through the Hillbilly Jim speech? I am sorry, my friend, uh, I'm that so, you had I was... to sit there. And... <laughs> but seeing the Dudleys get inducted, I'm not a huge Dudleys fan. But I, you know, I am. I recognize, I, like them. I recognize their their contributions to the business. They were, I think it's. I don't want to sound like an asshole. I'm nobody. I'm just doing this little podcast. That's all I am. Here. I've never contributed anything to the business, but Bully Ray likes to talk a lot about himself. <laughs> like in always, he compares everything to himself in the business, and that always that's the one thing that irks me. Other than that, I don't think they're that bad of a tag team. You know, I. I think um, they didn't really evolve. Like let's like when they went to TNA, they were kind of the same, it was the same gimmick. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I think they needed to evolve. And yeah. you know, I like them both, but it's just like mm-hmm. they, after a while, get the tables can only cause so much of a pop before you're just kind of like, okay, yeah, they're gonna get tables out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. You know, uh, what to expect every time you see them. One of the things that, uh, speaking of this, get the tables thing. Okay. Now, you didn't watch, uh, this is a question for DVD Freak, you didn't watch Slammiversary last night? I did not. I was working, or else I... Okay. I I regret not, because... I'm sure you can find it. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta understand, I haven't watched TNA since 2009 or 10. Like, so I'm just so, I'm so distant from it. It's a highly recommended product now. I've only been watching again on and off for like, you know, whatever, two years or whatever. But for the last, like, Dan and I do a show every Tuesday night, or lately it's been Wednesdays because of our work schedules conflict with it. So um, it's been a really consistent product. And they've been really built up this pay-per-view really well. They fucking delivered for the most part. It's not ever all the names popped up. Um, Shit, I forgot what the hell I was going to say about Impact. It was something that you just mentioned about uh, something. But Dudleys? Anyways. You were talking about, we were talking about the Dudleys when this got brought up. Oh, okay. This, okay. All right, this is it. They had a match between Moose and 
Tommy Dreamer where they were doing an old school rules match. Apparently, old school rules is not a regular wrestling match where there's no uh, weapons or anything. Apparently, it's just a fucking match where you can use things like garbage pails and weapons like apparently they're just using the term old school as like an ecw and, and era match. rules match yeah and hey, I'll, I'll, so i was just like i'll take it i didn't yeah i was just sitting there as i say like, what is old school about this it just reminds me of watching ecw who, in my personal opinion is not very old school it revolutionized wrestling and now it's all the stuff they did is pretty regular in the modern era of professional wrestling so it's not necessarily uh, old school rules yeah i mean I um, I went to a TNA TNA event in 2015. Yeah. I got to hang out with Jeff Hardy and EC3 a little bit. I'll tell yeah. you what, that was a house show. It probably brought in like 200 people. But I'll tell you yeah. what, man, that was one of the best house shows I've ever been to. Yeah, I have a couple of DVDs of their house shows. They um, they ran shows. Hermie Sadler ran the UWF, which was used to run their house shows basically for them. And I have a couple of DVDs on them. They sell them a high spot. They're really freaking cheap. Um, they're really, really great events. They really are. Their house shows are way better than the TV because there's no bullshit. They're not trying to sell a product, you know. I think we. Um, I think I had a Tommy Dreamer versus Abyss in a Monsters Ball match. Like, come on, that's great. I don't care what you <laughs> that, say. That, that's great. Be a good match. I'm gonna have to try to find see if there's any footage of this event anywhere. That sounds really awesome. Um, yeah, I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna run sure. to the bathroom. Sure thing. <laughs> Danny the Beast. So, what else yes, is going on, there? Sure. Not much. I mean, so we should, uh, should we uh, bring up the, uh, what else? The uh, the event that's coming in September, the convention. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me go to Wrestling Classic. Because uh, I'd uh, so. tell you what, I'm, uh, I, I'm still looking forward to that event. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm telling you, I want to party with Marty Panetti. You know, I don't want to do, you know, I, I don't want to be around the hookers. I don't want to be around the drugs. But, you know, having a nice drink or so with Marty Janetti, maybe right. get my arm around the guy and be like, hey, what's going on? You know, what's going on, pal, for a day? Um, that would definitely make my uh, wrestling experience. <laughs> I know some other names have been mentioned, and I'm going to try to, here we go. I'm going to try to find the... Uh, information and it's going to pop up eventually what the hell's that noise okay oh, so okay. apparently this is not the page that i'm looking for okay here we go so we got you know uh jesus christ my computer's running like shit salvio vega was announced i think that was the last name that might have been announced um we also got the Headbangers, Bob Orton Jr., Hornswoggle, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Let's see who else. Why is it not opening? All right, the Boogeyman, uh, your girlfriend, Jordan Grace, yes. Nyla Rose, Deanna Peraza is going to be there, uh, the winner, Barry Horowitz, Kevin oh, Sullivan. Okay. That, that's what I'm looking forward to meeting is Kevin Sullivan. Uh, this gentleman, I don't know. Andrew Anderson, Duke the Dumpster Drosy, The Godfather, Tony Gurria, hometown guy. He lives here, right here in Hamden. Wow. Jillian Hall, uh, The Ascension, Renee Michelle, uh, Dangerous Danny Davis, Paul Roma, Mario hey. Mancini. So that was kind of a pretty freaking good lineup, right? I mean... Yeah, I know there's other names mentioned. I know Brian Cage is going to be there. Uh, let's see who else, if I can find it. Yeah, there's a bunch of other. Just Incredible, I see, is going to be there. Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, Paradise Alley Tag Team Champions. The House of Pain will be there. I believe Ref Bill will be with them. Uh, a bunch of other great guys. We're talking about the Wrestling Classic Convention coming up in Hartford in September. DVD Freak. Um, be here. I, I met Brian Cage once. Uh, he was in New Orleans when I went to WrestleMania. He was just, and kind of hated myself for it, but I didn't recognize him. He was just chilling in the hotel, 
And Very I actually unique looking guy. Yeah, because I was like, I looked at my friend. I'm like, dude, he's a fucking wrestler. <laughs> like, and what really pissed me off was Eric Bischoff was staying two rooms away from me. And I missed him because my friend was getting ready and he was taking forever. And he was take um, Eric Bischoff was downstairs, like taking pictures with everyone. And I literally missed him by 30 seconds. Wow. I was so pissed off. <laughs> that sucks, man. He, he seems like he's kind of uh, calmed down over the years. <laughs> he's been humbled over the years since not being in the wrestling business. Yeah, I, I heard he was really nice because other people were like, oh, you just missed Eric Bischoff. He was really cool. I'm like, well, fuck me then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. So, all right. So what else? We got anything else we want to wrap up? We can go for another few minutes. Uh, speaking of Jeff's incredible, I'm still waiting for those fucking pictures. So. <laughs> How long? That's been what? Two, that's been what? Two weeks? No. Oh, no. No. That has to have no. been a couple. Couple days now because I think I got them Thursday. I want to say. Oh, okay. So it hasn't maybe, been that. Not well, not this past Thursday, but maybe it's like a, maybe a little bit earlier. I think it was on a Sunday. I believe it was on a Sunday before the uh, before the podcast for um, ECW. I believe. Okay. Well, right, I he's know be he was there today again signing autographs. Um, and I guess he's going to be there on the 31st. Him and Maven are going to be there signing together. So and That's something I'm going to be looking forward to. You know, maybe I can ask Maven, you know, uh, does he throw the best drop kick? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the person that throws the best drop kick is no longer with us. His name would be Brad Armstrong. He has the best drop kick ever in professional wrestling. Hell yeah. You'll hear Jim Ross say the same exact thing. Just saying. So, um, does Maven still wrestle? Like, what's he doing? I don't think he does anything. I, uh, was it somebody? Was it Dan? Maybe told me that he's a school teacher now. I yeah. believe. He I was a- yeah. Good yeah. for him. Yeah, I think that after he left the business, he, I don't know if he was disillusioned with the business. He just decided to just get out of it. Right. Taking calls well, and such. I know after WWE, I think he faced, like, a lot of drug problems. And um, I, I think he pursued some, like, acting a little bit. Because I think he got some roles in some TV shows. Um, probably some, like, on-air, like, Dancing with the Stars type show. I'm not sure. But, um, I mean, that's much as I can recall from Maven. And then, speaking of Maven... Uh, that buddy Ryan Frost I was talking to you um, about today who works with me, he was mentioning that uh, when he met Maven, he was actually a bouncer for a bar. Okay. Apparently oh. he was in... Uh, he did have a television career. He did some work with MTV outside of that. And uh, Yeah, it's saying here that he was arrested April 2nd, 2012 after... Police revealed that he was doctor shopping due to addiction to oxycodone and hydrocodone. Wow, shit, man. He seems like such a normal dude. But who the hell knew? But whatever. We don't have to continue talking about that. But yeah, I didn't realize that Maven was actually his real first name. I just thought it was some made up bullshit. I never heard anybody. Oh, wait, that's really, his, that's, that's really his, his first name? name. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. It was just a character name they created. Shit. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty comical. So, I guess that's pretty much it. I don't have much else to talk about unless you guys want to continue. Um, any any pickups, Rick? Yeah, well, I know you haven't shopped in a while, but no pickups. Uh, I'm trying to stay low-key. I got that autographed Bob Backlund book uh, recently. He wrote really gigantic in it. Uh, maybe he didn't have his glasses or something, but... Um, <laughs> he wrote. Uh, he was. He was actually a very, very nice guy. He actually remembered me this time when I, uh, when I saw him. I only saw him last time in like March or something like that, uh, at an indie event, and he uh, remembered me this time when I saw him. So yeah, that's that's the only thing I picked up was that, uh, that thing, the Bob Backman book, which I, I actually am going to read it because it seems like it's probably a really interesting book. Well, Rick. One thing that you know that I picked up this week, well, DVD Freak, you probably know too, but I might as well show it to our viewers here. Um, 
is the uh, recent NWA DVD of NWA Into the Fire. That's a pay-per-view. really good event. That's a really great event. I watched that live. Yeah. Definitely like the artwork in here. And this took place December 14th of 2019. Was there any bonuses uh, in there? Uh, doesn't say any bonuses, but I'm going to read off the match card here. Uh, we had Eli Drake taking on Ken Anderson. We had Thunder Rosa taking on Tasha Steeles. We had Question Mark taking on Trevor Murdoch, which I'm not even going to lie. I've been liking Question Mark a little bit lately. It's been uh, getting me over. We had the NWA World Tag Team Championships on the line with the Rock and Roll Express taking on the Wild Cards. Um, we had Allison K versus oh Allison K and ODB taking on Molina and Marty Bell. We had the NWA National Championship Triple Threat match with Colt Cabana, Aaron Stevens, also known as Damian Sandow, and Ricky Starks. And for the main event, we had the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and a two out of three falls match with Nick. All this taking on James Storm. That was a really good match. So, do you watch the NWA DVD? I haven't. I I, I've no. heard only but good things. Um, it is uh, when they're creating product, they are my favorite wrestling organization out there. But it's been a while since they've done anything because of this pandemic. Um, I did want to ask you, what are your thoughts on the packaging? Because I've heard a lot of people complain about the packaging. Well, here's the thing about the packaging. Um, it's kind of related to Ring of Honor's packaging on how Ring of Honor started packaging their DVDs as in, like, 2014, I believe. Um, when I first got the NWA Power Season 1, um, very much similar, kind of flimsy. So, when it arrives through mail, I mean, one of the discs may pop out. But, um, other than that, when I received this, it was still intact. Nothing popped out. Um, I like it. You know, very glossy. Um, you know, it tends to get a little bit marked up with fingerprints, you know, as often as you touch it, which I'm very a big pet peeve about. Um, yeah. But other than that, um, very well designed. Um, it, it's not the best packaging, but it's something I can tolerate. Because um, I saw um, Relaxing Ghost... Some other people might have done an unboxing of the season one of Power. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it looks kind of cheap to me. But I'd have to actually, like, physically have it to be able to judge it or not. One right. of the things that with, I mean, with that style of uh, cover art is that they it gets shelf wear. That's one thing that I don't particularly, you know, yep. it, it gets, the, the edges will fray a little bit. They'll, you know, they'll get white and dulled. But other than that, it's not so bad. I mean, you, you get a little bit of a harder thing on the inside, which is good. But if it's a one disc set, I don't mind it. But you got to be really more cautious if you were to buy a set in this same type of packaging that contains like two, three DVDs, which right. would probably be the only concern. Oh. Um, would you guys be interested in an AEW DVD? I think that they should do it because the only thing that I've seen right now is like bootleg Blu-rays and stuff like that. And the people that are producing them really, you know, do nice artwork for them and all that stuff. They make them look really professional, but I'd like to see them do commercial DVDs on like themselves. As far as I know, they they were planning on it. It just never That's came. That's what to I thought too. Yeah, yeah um, because I would love to have Double or Nothing, the first one, that pay-per-view. That almost had me in tears. That's how good it yeah. was. That like, was a very awesome event. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love for them to... I get asked so often if they're going to get DVDs. I'm like, I, I hope so. I would love for it. I would totally buy them. Yeah, I think they just haven't hit that market yet. They're The fan base they have, I don't know how many of them actually collect physical media outside of you know, whatever like they just fucking buy t-shirts or whatever it's like they go for that pro wrestling tease crowd pro wrestling great you know guys that were into like uh new japan and indie stuff you know what i mean like that's like 
they, they push that stuff. So it's the whole streaming thing might be that crowd base, but there's the, the, the physical media thing is probably for very few and far between as far as like, you know, guys like you and I yep. basically, I, well, but I, well, I would surely buy them though, if they were produced. Well, let's put it this way. Never say never. I mean, they did just release their commercial for their action figures coming out. Yeah. So that's yeah. definitely start. Um, I know there were some rumors and innuendo about a video game that was supposed to be released. That's sure probably that still in the work. Yep. So DVDs, I think that would be a question. But as in this day of age, as DVDs are slowly becoming somewhat obsolete, obviously mm-hmm. WWE is not really doing as much DVDs anymore except for pay-per-views. Um, other than that, I mean, I definitely wouldn't mind having, like, at least, like, a Blu-ray DVD set of, like, AEW, maybe the best of AEW 2019 into 2020, you know, definitely wouldn't mind now, that. Let me ask you guys this, because I don't know if it was ever produced. Was All In ever produced onto DVD or no? Did that never nope. come out either? No. That's a shame. That's a shame, man. That's a great event. I, I... I... Oh, go ahead. I just remember, you know, when that thing was advertised, it was like, I kind of fell in late to the game. It's kind of when I started really getting back into things like full swing and I was hearing about it. And I finally, you know, I just sat down and watched it that night and I was like, holy shit, this is just a fucking amazing event. Like, you know, they took every indie name that has been like pretty popular for like a few years and just combined them all onto one super show. It was a really good show. Um. That was one of the few pay-per-views I paid for because I wanted them to succeed. I'm serious. Yeah. I was no, so I sick. I'm so fucking sick of WWE shit. That yes. I, oh, I hear that, man. I, I bought All In, and it was completely worth the 40 bucks. Yeah. And my idea for an AEW DVD is why not just release a two- or three-disc set every year for Blu-ray? Just have all four pay-per-views on it, like in That's December. A great. That's a great idea. That's a really yeah. great idea. Yeah, just do an anthology set. I would totally love that. Do them like the end of the year around Christmas time when people will be buying stuff like that. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good idea. Well, I'm hoping by Christmas time we get NWA Power season two. Um, you know, I'm done. I'm all done with season one. I caught up with yeah. some of my NWA. So. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to season two, and I am so glad we got the announcement from Billy Corgan yeah. that the NWA is not shutting down. So yeah, that thank was, God I about remember that that bullshit rumor that Raven was starting, saying that he heard they were closing down. I that was the first thing I saw when I woke up that morning, so I was all frazzled at seven o'clock in the morning because I love the NWA. I think it's the greatest thing out there. I was, like, really upset, and I was texting people, people that are in the know with the NWA, people that are talking, that talk to people in the NWA regularly. Nobody was, nobody knew what the fuck was going on. So, but eventually, towards the afternoon, that's when fucking Billy Corgan went on Instagram and just made a whole gigantic post about that, you know, basically they're not shutting down and that they're going to continue, which I'm really looking forward to them starting up again and producing television because... I miss those guys. Like, I miss watching them every single week. 6.05 on Tuesdays. Um, I gotta ask. Just, yeah? I gotta ask, what's in the flask? <laughs> oh, I, uh, it's my Jack Daniels. So, okay. uh, there, you set. there you go. Yeah, there you I go. had I had some fireball earlier. That's gone. And, so. and uh, Rick, ironically, it's my uh, TNA um, homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that in the uh, would you get that in the, the tote right yeah I got that in yeah. the tote bag so probably the biggest mistake I ever made was <laughs> buying tote Brian, bag specials thinking like hey I'm gonna get some really good shit and I end up getting a, a fucked up John Hennigan fucking t-shirt with a moose t-shirt which that, that John Morrison t-shirt I threw it away I ripped it up and threw it away I was like fuck that huh um, it's it's funny because I've heard about the you know the brown bag specials they had for years, and then I was watching this YouTuber do videos for him, and eventually he just fucking let it reveal it. It's like it's just some shit they have laying around in the warehouse they can't get rid of that so they mark down. I was like, yeah, all right. So I was like, maybe this isn't for me. 
Now, I'm a, you know, I'm a mystery crate type of guy, a mystery box, a grab bag. I'll go crazy if uh, people start selling, like, promotions and, and places will sell that stuff when it's wrestling DVDs or random shit. I just turn around and sell, but whatever I don't like. But the TNA shit and Impact shit, it's just extremely hard to sell their shit. Nobody really wants it, so that's the bad part. Uh, speaking of something I had to rebuy, I had the got the Christian Cage set. Nice. I saw that recently. Yeah, that's. I met him when he worked there. Uh, he that's had awesome. In the in, he worked there in Indy in the area, and he had the NWA belt with him. He was not the most pleasant person that I met. He was like one of the least pleasant people I had ever met. Uh, which I was kind of like, wow, that's surprising. So and uh, you know what? Insane. Speaking of uh, speaking of nice TNA DVDs, um, I recently got this uh, TNA DVD. It's pretty rare to find, um, and that is the uh, Best of Raven. Set. There you go. So, I've seen a couple good re- uh, Best of TNA DVDs that I really need to pick up. Like there was a, I didn't realize it was a Kurt Angle one that they did that looks really fucking awesome. I thought the series that he had with Samoa Joe were really awesome. And then yeah. another one DVDs that I got. Um, still sealed, as you guys can see, still sealed. And that is the uh, Sting Return of an Icon DVD that That's TNA awesome. produced. Uh, um, cool. Honestly, this this definitely wasn't bad. I definitely would prefer this over the um, the Moment of Truth DVD. I think yeah. that was like 2003, it's um, like the movie? where it's basically just him storytelling and people, you know, actors playing as Sting, and I'm just like, yeah. eh. You know. I started to watch that, but I couldn't handle. Uh, I couldn't handle it. I had to shut it off after about a good 20 minutes or so. So, I think I have that around here somewhere. But a lot of the TNA pay per views are pretty worthless. But the compilation yes. sets are very valuable. I don't think anybody really wants the pay per views. I don't know why, but they're oh, dude. I used, to, I used and, to find them used for dirt cheap at like Fye and stuff. Oh, dude, I, I, I bought the pay-per-views. Like, a lot of those bundle deals that I got from TNA, like, I bought yeah. a lot of those TNA DVDs. Um, right. One of them that I actually saw that I was surprised they even had was probably one of my favorite TNA pay-per-views. Probably one of the best TNA pay-per-views. Um, Unbreakable 2005, which had the um, epic, you know, epic match between uh, Samoa Joe Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles. Right. That's um that's probably the rarest pay per view DVD. So, I mean, I, I was surprised TNA even had it for uh for the price they did. So yeah. Yep. There's the DVD. Is it What's this one you were talking about? Is it yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's... I haven't watched it yet. Oh, dude. <laughs> Trust me. You're um... gonna probably use a little bit more whiskey. I was just going to say, you might want to drink, grab some more liquor for that. Well, I'll tell you what, it took a lot to get through the uh, <laughs> the 2000, what was it, the Sting documentary that WWE released, all where he's talking about religion and crap. I just, oh, that took a lot to get through, I'll tell you that. Well, I didn't know, that's... I didn't know it was going to be about that. No, I don't want to offend anybody listening, but that, um, that's a thing that uh, a lot of people... A lot of those guys at that age go through where they decide to, you know, after their career is done and over with, you know. But so we got to hear a lot about that, unfortunately, uh, even if we're not necessarily into it. Yeah, I mean, it's like Shawn Michaels or, you know, if that's your thing, that's cool. You know, if that's what you yeah. need to Do repair your. Do not push it on anybody. Yeah, yeah if, if you're repairing your life cool whatever you know if that's what you need to get sober and get your life together you know do you yeah, that's absolutely. power to you man. absolutely i i'm personally not religious at all but if you are nope. then if that's what you need good for you no nope. all right gentlemen why don't we tell everybody where you can be found dvd freak let's start with you uh youtube the dvd freak i just uh last week started making videos again so um excellent um, you know, that's definitely really cool. Having fun with that. And the Facebook page I made, Wrestling DVD Room, you know, you can share your 
your recent pickups or, you know, you can even promote yourself, you know, your YouTube channel. If you do unboxings and reviews and stuff like that, I usually let people, you know, kind of get more exposure that way. So that's really it. I'm not really big on social media. I have a Twitter, but I only use it for news. Danny. All right. So you can find me on Facebook uh, at Danny Bryant. Uh, you know, people would stop calling me Daniel Bryan. You know, that'd be really fucking nice. I had all the fucking time. What well, saw your match last night? Good for you. You know, fuck you. <laughs> um, uh, you can find me on Instagram at d underscore banshee one eighty seven, and you can find me on YouTube at Danny Beast ninety four. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you're watching my channel and you're not subscribed. What are you doing? Hit that button. All right, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Rick Del Santo, and of course this wonderful YouTube channel. One of you guys wanted to speak before we go. Uh, I have one thing to say. You have the sure. best catchphrase. What are you doing? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> never, never kill that off. That is a great catchphrase. I love it, man. I, I, right, I've really been thinking about making t-shirts.